Now, have you ever wondered if these exercises are bad for you? But my shoulders are killing me. That hurts the shoulder, creating a shear force on the shoulder joint. You're, all those forces are going through the joint. This kneecap's getting driven into the thigh. Today, I'm here with Dr. Majors, who is an orthopedic doctor and a specialist in this sort of sports medicine. To give us a lowdown on what's really going on with our body. come into a weight room like this and you start working out, are there some exercises that are bad for you? Well, it's probably not as much exercises that are bad for you as technique, how you do that exercise. And of course, what you do depends on what it is you're trying to get out of it. In other words, train to your goals. In this case, it's really important to know Dr. Major's motto and his training philosophy. You wanna be in the best shape of your life the last day you're on Earth. So we're trying to do all of this so that we can stay healthy and keep working out. Right, right. So remember, just because you see amazing athletes doing certain exercises doesn't mean that they will help you in the long run. Certain exercises may be needed for a particular sport. What we're talking about are things you can do to keep you from getting hurt. In particular, you have to protect the joint. That's the most important thing. You start breaking down the cartilage, that's the beginning of arthritis. And even though there's a lot of science out there, there's nothing out there that regrows or regenerates cartilage. Key. That's not good news. That's not good news. A lot of people take on these really extreme, intense workouts before even working up to that. It's easy for an athlete that's in really good shape to go out and do some of these you know, phenomenal workouts. But if you take somebody who's really hasn't been working out and that's the first thing they want to do, they're just overloading their body too much too quick. Now it's important to note that Dr. Majors doesn't have a problem with any particular training program. But he is an orthopedic doctor and he sees patients every single day that have these problems. You have to remember the basic science of joints and, and kind of takes us back a little bit to our geometry. Through simple sketch, Dr. Majors showed me how the force is applied to the joint while you're lifting weights. Here's your knee. If it's bent like this and you try to extend the leg, then there's a force this way and a force this way. Now the resulting force on your patella, on your knee, can be shown in a vector like this. But if you do a deep squat, then that force on your knee is several times greater simply because you've lost the mechanical advantage. And it seems clear that once you go past a certain point, it cannot be good for your joint. And he reminded me that the point of lifting weights is to put strain on the muscles, not to strain the joints. Thus, there are better ways to do certain exercises if you want to build muscle while having healthy joints. So we're going to go through all these different exercises and we're going to show you the proper way to do them. Got some weights over here set up. About when it touches. Wow, that's not very deep at all. It doesn't feel very deep, but you're still getting a good quad workout. Right. And if you say, hey, this is way too easy, I'll throw some more weights on it for you. Does doing a deep squat and a regular squat work the muscle in the same way? You're just putting less strain on your joint? Yes, it sure does. We'll do two half squats for every full squat. You'll get a better muscle workout with less risk of injuring the joint. If I go deeper, and you get to the point where you're like more or less on your chest, Right. where's the stress here? Now when you go to lift this weight, the first thing your shoulder is doing is going upwards in the joint. Right. It's hard to demonstrate where the, where the weight is when I'm like holding the whole thing static as he's explaining it. When you get your elbows beyond 90 degrees, you're starting to load that joint again. The forces across the elbow and particularly the shoulder are pushing it forward. You start to fire your muscles, the ball actually is being forced upward in the socket until it oh, clears right. 90 and then it settles back down. Oh, right there. I can kind of feel that it changes position a little yeah. bit. Get beyond Is that 90. 90? That's 90 and that's okay. a good dip. You get deeper than that and then you get that whole reverse of the forces on your shoulder when you go to get up. Now as you go to fire up, that ball is trying to go out the front of the shoulder. Where's the pressure or where's the strain? Here you're on the shoulder again and you're forcing the shoulder out the front. The forces are pushing your shoulder out and up, which is on, on the capsule and the cuff. That point, you've got muscle that turns into tendon that's attached to the bone. It's literally pulling in a straight line, trying to bend this elbow. Once you get the initial bend, then the fulcrum gets to the point where it has a good mechanical advantage. Right. So in this case, the flexion, amount of flexion isn't critical, it's the amount of extension. All the, all the pull is compressing this joint versus right. bending this joint. So, after an entire session of Dr. Majors showing us how to work our muscles with the least impact on our joints, I think I've changed the way I work out so I can keep working out my entire life. 
Remember to watch the next video in this series, which is Muscle Basics, and we'll see you in the next one. We're gonna have Casey Eichfeld on. He's doing sound right now, but he's about to come become a fitness model. It's kind of a big deal. <laughs> he's, a, he's an Olympic kayaker. <laughs> yeah.